Okay, here we go. So, um, so far we've done um, knowing the population standard deviation, right? Comparing two samples that are independent. Um, and so, let's talk about where we're going. Um, this one, this flow chart, kind of helps you see. Um, it says, are both population standard deviations known? If the answer is, it's hard to see. If the answer is yes, then um, if both populations are normal or sample sizes are at least 30, and that's another yes, you use the z-test. This is 8.1 right here. If the answers are no, this one just is stopping. You just stop the test all completely if you don't have both populations normal or both sample sizes are at least 30. If the answer is no and you don't know the population standard de de deviation, the question then becomes, are the population um, uh, variances equal? And if the answer is yes, um, then you're going to... Uh, do this t-test, and if the answer is no, then you're going to do this t-test. So um, these are both 8.2. We're going to practice them both today. Uh, 8.3 is for dependent samples, like paired samples. And 8.4 is for proportions. Okay, <clears throat> so a two-sample t-test is used to test the difference between two population means, again, when we don't know the population standard deviation and they're independent, okay? And then the question is, are the variances equal? Do you remember variances are like the standard deviation squared, okay? So that's what they're checking on. Are the variances equal? And this will say right in the problem. And this will also say on the AP test, like they don't even expect you to notice it. They'll just be like, just so you know, the variances are equal or they're not equal. Okay. So if the variances are equal, here's the formula we're going to use and we're going to write it all out. This is hard to understand. First, we've got the on top x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2. What is that mu 1 minus mu 2 usually? Zero, zero right? So I'm just going to write minus zero here, but you don't have to write that in your formula when you do it. On the bottom is going to be uh, this horrible combination of things. So a lot, lots of stuff here. Here we go. Um, there's two huge square roots. There's a really big one, and then a uh, not as big one like that. First one is n1 minus 1 times s squared sub 1 plus n sub 2 minus 1 times s squared sub 2. On the bottom is n1 plus n2 minus 2. Yeah, I know, it's chaotic. Um, this is the biggest formula we have. Again, David, if you want to figure out how to prove it and come show me, that'd be cool. But I think this one's a bit beyond me. Um, and then we multiply it by this, which is 1 over n sub 1 plus 1 over n sub 2. And that's if the variances are equal. Yes, yep. All right, the second one is a lot easier. Um, oh, and the degree of freedom for the first one is equal to n sub 1 plus n sub 2 minus 2. If the variances are not equal, we still start with that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 on the top minus 0, which, again, you don't have to type in the calculator. On the bottom, 
is a lot easier. It is just the square root of um, the standard deviation squared sub 1 divided by n sub 1 plus the standard deviation squared sub 2 divided by n sub 2. And then in this case, the degree of freedom is um, n, minus, n sub 1 minus 1 or n sub 2 minus 1, whichever one is smaller. That's the degree of freedom. So yeah, it's the day of horrible formulas. Luckily, the math isn't hard. It's exactly what we've been doing. It's just the formulas are difficult. Um, and I am going to show you how to do it in your calculator so you don't have to do all of the actual formula in your calculator, okay? Like there's a test to do it by yourself. Uh, so why is it minus zero if you don't know what the means are? Because you're assuming that they are equal for the h sub o. So like remember mu, the thing we used before was the claim. Uh, so we'd say like, hey, our claim is, is that mu is greater than 30. Right? But now our claim is, or not our claim, but our h sub o is that the two populations aren't the same. So if the two populations are the same and you subtract their means, you get zero. Okay. Does everybody have this written down? This chaos? All right. Because I have sympathy for your hands, um, I just... I just pasted the guidelines this time. There's some stuff that I would add. So I'm going to add a couple things here. <coughs> Verify that the population standard deviations are unknown. That's the big deal with this one. And that it's independent. This is in the problem. Instead of saying sometimes that the variances are equal, they'll say that the variances are pooled, um, which means that they're kind of combined. Um, so look for that, too. Um, the degree of freedom changes based on which one it is. So um, the top one is the if the variances are equal. Um, the bottom one is the variances aren't equal. Now, if you look at